So hey guys, today we're gonna you're gonna learn more about Colombia. Colombia is the second most favorite country I have ever visited in my life. I have been to 88 countries now, I think, 88 countries as of doing this presentation. And I put Colombia at number two. So that's saying a lot how amazing Colombia is. It is just absolutely breathtaking. I was like, especially if you like landscapes, I was just shocked when I was taking the local buses there and seeing the, you know, the rolling hills and deep grooves in the mountains and it's just all green and it's such a diverse place too because one minute you are in the beach and one minute you are in the mountains it's freezing which doesn't make sense because you're by the equator like why is it cold you know so it's really an amazing place now there is a lot of safety things that we are going to cover today uh, the biggest thing that i have to mention about colombia is you're pretty much safe in colombia unless you look for trouble <laughs> So okay. what, by, what I mean by that is if you look for cocaine, trouble will find you. When I went there, there was an Australian girl who got involved with the cartels and she tried to smuggle cocaine for them, $1 million worth, I think, just, I guess maybe just to start her off. And she got, she got arrested and now she's in a Colombian jail. So if you look for trouble, it's going to find you. So don't look for trouble. And I say that right now very with to, to give you caution, but a lot of people don't listen to me. When I went to Colombia, a lot of people were looking for trouble. Mm -hmm. A lot of backpackers look for cocaine. I go to hostels and the backpackers are storing cocaine. So, <laughs> like I, so not, not all of them, but there is, there is like a, a percent, at least 25% of them. Cause it's part of the deal, right? Like, you know, like, like, cause you know, you go to Colombia, right? And what's Colo like when, when people talk about Colombia, what's the first thing that pops in your mind? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like we're, I'm, we're not trying to, you know, put stereotypes here, but that's the truth, right? So, you know, you know, it's like, you know, the saying like when in Rome, be a Roman, right? So when in Colombia, you know, so okay. yeah, exactly. So, so don't, don't do that when you go there and you're going to be, a, you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. He's laughing. He's probably going to do that. But anyways. <laughs> All right, so um, I kind of mentioned why I traveled to Colombia. Let's go do a quick history lesson of Colombia. Um, okay, so quick history lessons. So 1509 is when the Spanish people first arrived and settled and conquered, and started conquering Colombia. It wasn't until 1819 when Colombia gained independence from, from Spain. But it wasn't until 1886 when Colombia was finally established as the Republic of Colombia, where they become a democracy. Because prior to that, they were trying different governments and none of them was working. And they were just fighting constant civil wars until they <coughs> finally settled on democracy, which seems to have worked until today. Um, the two biggest problem that Colombia ever had faced in their entire history is the FARC, the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. And their goal is to represent Colombia's rural, uh, rural poor by seizing power through armed revolution. And they have a Marxist, Latinist, communist ideals. So the U.S. government actually sent a lot of their troops into Colombia, not, not to fight the cartel. They don't care about the cartel, actually. They cared about communists back in the days when it was like all about fighting the communists, you know, fought communist Russia, Cuba. So Because FARC was backed by the, by the Soviets and the Cubans. Poss it's, yeah, very possible. It was. No, it was. It was, yeah, okay. Um, and in 1975 to 1980s, the rise of Pablo Escobar. So everyone knows Pablo Escobar. When you think of uh, Colombia, you think of Pablo Escobar and the Medellin cartel. Um, there's a really good TV show on Netflix you can watch. It's called um, Narcos. <laughs> so, but they kind of make Pablo Escobar look like the good guy there. So Co <laughs> Colombians don't like that TV show because they said he's actually a bad guy. So they don't know why in the TV show Narcos, they made him look like the, the good guy. Like you actually sympathize for him, which is kind of weird, right? Because he's the, he's the evil person. Um, he was shot and killed in 1993. And that's kind of when the Medellin cartel kind of started dwindling. And then the Cali cartel came in and then they also beat the Cali, Cali cartel. Um, 2019, Colombia and FARC finally signed a ceasefire. So it's, and it wasn't until 2017 when FARC was dismantled and handed their weapons over to the UN. So if you're wondering why is Colombia safe now, it wasn't until February 2017 when the, the last threat in Colombia finally gave away all their arms. I went to Colombia in April 2017, two months after this happened. So I got completely just lucky, you could say. Because when I went there, I was like, oh my God, this place is so safe. What's, what's, what's the big deal that people are making out 
it to be such a dangerous country. I got lucky. I didn't realize that it was, you know, it was just two months after FARC has been dismantled and now the country is safe. Uh, the locals were actually telling me that before they were scared to take the local long distance buses because the FARC would potentially ambush the bus and take, steal people's stuff. So, so now it's safe. Now it's safe. But it wasn't before. So there was definitely uh, room to worry before. Uh, why Colombia though? Why should you go to Colombia? Um, it's, they have a very easy transportation system. So I'll go into detail about that, but their buses are so easy to use and they make our buses here in Canada look bad. You know, Greyhound's one of the worst buses in the world and you know, you go to, uh, to Colombia and you're like, oh, this is what a bus, a bus ride should be like. Their bus has TVs and it's like, a, it's like an airplane, you know, you can yeah. Now the only downside is in Spanish, so you don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Even the, you know, if you watch like a, a Marvel movie, you know, like, like Infinity Wars or whatever, it's in Spanish, so you don't know what they're talking about. Um, it's a good place to learn Spanish. So their Spanish is one of the easier ones to, to learn. Um, I plan on going back to Colombia one day to learn Spanish, because I think I want to learn Spanish from, from there. Um, it's inexpensive. So one Canadian dollar is about two to 2,300 uh, Canadian peso. Colombian peso. Colombian peso, yeah. So just to give you like a rough idea, uh, one meal usually costs anywhere between 5,000 to 10,000 Colombian peso. So one meal costs about 250 to $5. So it's a lot of times actually cheaper to eat out than to cook your own food mm -hmm. in Colombia. Yeah, it does not make sense whatsoever for you to cook in Colombia. You should just eat out. Uh, and they always give you massive portions too. So if you want to be on a budget, you can just eat one giant meal and you're good for the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, like I said, it's cheap and filling. Uh, really friendly people. So. 90, I, say, I would say 90% of Colombia is friendly. The only non-friendly place in Colombia is the border to Ecuador. So that border city, people there are scammers, right? But the moment you get out of that border town, it's nice. I actually did not go to Cartagena when I went there, but I heard Cartagena is also quite rough because it's such a touristy place. So there's a lot of people that's trying to scam you. So aside from those two places, I think it's gonna be more, more or less more friendly. But just expect that to happen when you go to those two towns. Expect people to try to scam you, expect people to, uh, Try to rip you off. Do you know what, what, what kind of scams, scams are they pulling? Taxi scams usually. Oh, taxi scams. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go into detail about that. I, I have the prices here, so if they try to scam you, I have the price. This is the real price. Okay. Now the cool thing about Colombia is when people try to scam me, the local Colombians actually came out and defended me. It was such an interesting experience because usually when people try to scam you in other countries, especially Egypt, like one of the worst places yeah. I've ever been to. Um, no one, it's just normal, right? They scam you. Oh, you're, 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 you're a tourist. You deserve to be scammed, you know? Because you, you make more money than us, so you deserve to give us some of your money. But in Colombia, when someone tries to scam you, I've actually had a few Colombians step in. They're like, hey, don't do that. And they actually like lecture the driver not to do that. And I knew the driver was scamming me because I know the price, but it was nice to see a local like Colombian fight for you. So I was like, wow, I've never been to a country where the locals help me out, you know? Uh, and like it's a very interesting history, you, you know what the history is like, so we won't go into detail about that. Uh, Colombia fun facts. So I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you can't read this. It's so tiny. Um, Spanish is spoken by 99% of the country. You need to learn Spanish. No one speaks English in Colombia. Uh, you might get lucky once in a while. Like I, when I first took a bus in Colombia, there was this one random guy. He's Colombian guy who worked for United Airlines. So <laughs> I got absolutely lucky. That doesn't happen. Okay, usually they don't speak uh, Spanish. The good news is Spanish is relatively easy to learn. Yeah. So, like I just had high school Spanish and that was enough. Um, population is 46 million and the capital is Bogota. Uh, they have extreme landscapes in Colombia. So sometimes you have snow-capped mountains and volcanoes, tropical beaches, deserts, grasslands, savannas, and jungles. So you, ha you have everything pretty much. Um, the three biggest ethnic groups are European settlers, Native Americans, and Africans. So one of the cities I went to, called Barichara, which I'll kind of go into detail later on, has people that are blonde and blue eyes, but they speak Spanish, but their descent is actually German. So it's so interesting. People kind of go out there and they're like, what the heck, this like, is full of Germans here, but it's, it's Colombia. So it, it, it's definitely full of uh, a wide variety of uh, ethnic groups. Uh, the equator runs through Southern Colombia, yet it's cold, like I said. So it's, it's, you're gonna be in for a shock because it's, it's cold for some reason. Uh, Colombia was named after Christopher Columbus's last name. Okay. Uh, Medellin was once the murder capital of the world with 17 murders per day back in 1991. So every day, 17 people gets gets killed. So that was that was that was bad. But obviously, like I said, now it's that does, that's not, it doesn't happen anymore. So. Um, 
Colombia is the second most biodiverse country in the world after Brazil, and there's only 17 mega diverse countries in the world. And what they mean by mega diverse is having all the different landscapes in one place. Uh, Colombia is part of the Ring of Fire, so there's a lot of volcanic eruptions in Colombia. And uh, in 2014, Colombia was ranked the happiest country in the world, with 86% of the people polled reporting that they were happy living in Colombia. So you go there and you'll realize, oh my god, everyone's so chill, so happy. So chill. Everyone's like, everyone's <laughs> cracking jokes at you. Um, they tell a lot of uh, inappropriate jokes, so if you don't have a sense of humor or you're a little bit uptight, you might not look like, like Colombia. <laughs> but if you are easygoing and you don't mind people telling you some inappropriate jokes, then you're gonna have a blast. Like, I, I like inappropriate jokes, so for me, I was like, oh my god, this place is awesome. Uh, I'll tell you some of the ones that they told me later. <laughs> yeah. Um, Colombia is this big in it, comparison to Canada, so it's pretty much as big as BC and Alberta, so that's kind of like how you want to see, like pretend you're kind of traveling between those two provinces. Uh, trip planning, so we're now going to go into trip planning. Um, we're going to talk about how to get around Colombia, budgeting and exchanging money, route planning, what to see and do, and safety tips, okay? Okay, so there's three ways you can get around. Um, I put South Africa here, I forgot to change my slides. <laughs> 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 um, so there's three ways you can get around Colombia. It's by bus, taxis, or plane. So long distance buses are gonna be your, uh, good, your main method of transportation. I can't tell you how many buses I took in Colombia. You're gonna be taking it left and right. The one I starred were the ones I've taken, the companies I've taken. So these are all the different companies that you can take. Uh, there are more than this, but these are the more popular ones. Um, Expresso, Bolivariano, and Fronteras are the luxury buses. I, I recommend them if you're in Colombia. Uh, they're not too expensive and they're extremely comfortable. I, have, I took a 24-hour uh, bus from the border of Colombia and Ecuador all the way to Bogota on front terrace and it was, like I said, it was a really good experience. This guy saw me taking a picture of him <laughs> while walking through the aisle of that bus. Um, I also took Copetran, it's okay. And uh, you're also gonna be taking a lot of collective buses. Now, collective buses can be a little bit cramped, but I can tell you right now, they're such a fun experience and they're really safe too. Like, I can't tell you how many times I was treated so well when I was in Colombia. Like, the locals would shove me right in the front of the bus and then, you know, in, in Colombia, they call me Jackie Chan, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, oh, yeah. I, just, I, I can't tell you how many times people like said, hey, Jackie Chan, or they'll, like, be, they'll be like, me gusta Jackie Chan, you know, I like Jackie Chan, you know. So, <laughs> or kids, kids, kids walking by will call me Jackie Chan, and, you know, like, it's, it, it's fine, you know. Like I said, you need to be able to take a joke when you're, you're in Colombia, and, and, and it's fine. So I, I take the local buses, and they shove me the right in the very front, and it, it was so good because then at the front you get the view of like the landscape and everything and the driver's like really friendly and like joking around with you so like I said, no one takes anything seriously in Colombia so it's, it's like just, just make sure you have a sense of humor. Um, this is what I mean, this is the bus, see? There's like a, 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 a screen, you can watch movies in the bus and, and the, the seat can recline quite a bit so you can, you're really, really comfortable. Um, safety wise, I would say they're quite safe but you want to make sure you're locking all your belongings, though. Um, thieves in Colombia are opportunists. They're not so much that they're going to take your stuff if it's bulky. It's, they're more likely to open your stuff and grab something out of it. But it's not as bad as Italy or Europe. Like, I went to Europe. Like, I was, I was walking in Europe in the uh, Vatican, and people, like, I, this backpack here, all the zippers were open. That didn't even happen in Colombia. So, you know, I think European thieves are better than the Colombian thieves. So, just to give you, like, a little bit of a perspective. Gypsies, yeah. Yeah, the gypsies. Um, I did leave my bag in the bus whenever we had a food stop. I did not bring it out with me. And the reason why was because I, the guy who worked for United Airlines that I met in the bus, he said to me, your bag is safer inside the bus than outside. Because outside someone can swipe it and go away with it. Inside the bus, right when we all leave the bus, the driver locks the bus and all the belongings is safe inside. So don't worry. The only thing you keep in mind though is your bag. Make sure that it has a lock on it so that no one can like open it and grab like a wallet or your passport. Okay, so just lock it. And then, so it's like a double protection. The bus, the bus is locked, your bag is locked, okay? Taxis, so um, taxis are actually very honest in Colombia except for the border. 
So the sheer taxes in the border of Ecuador, tons of scams. Be careful. I they tried to scam me, and I was lucky I did not get scammed. But only because the locals helped me. You can also take Uber in Colombia. It's illegal, but everyone takes it. Um, basically, when you take an Uber ride, they just get you to sit on the front, so you pretend they're your buddies. I mean, it does. It doesn't really make sense because I'm I'm Asian and, <laughs> and like I I don't look like a local, <laughs> you know. But if you, if you, if you're European descent, then you can get away with it. So yeah, you, you can yeah you look like a Colombian, you can definitely get away with it. Um, I was shocked how honest taxis were in Colombia. Like I said, I've been to so many countries before, and I don't know how many times I took a taxi, and they only charged me like five thousand Colombian peso, like two fifty. I'm like that's it. I feel like I'm scamming this taxi driver. Like I feel like I'm the scammer in this in this situation. <laughs> Like, seriously, like 250? <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know why I have South Africa up there. <laughs> Ignore that. Um, so the buses that, uh, uh, the planes that you can take in, in, in Colombia are Avianca, Latam, Popa Air, Viva Colombia, and Easy Fly. Now, within Colombia, the most popular bus to take is actually Viva Colombia. All the locals rave about this one. So if you want to fly between Colombian cities, you want to take Viva Colombia. Um, I took LATAM Airways when I was inside Colombia um, only because I had freaking flyer miles. So if you have if you have Avios, like British Airways Avios, they're very good redemption within Colombia. Like it's, I think it's only like 4,500 Avios miles for like from Bogota to Medellin, Medellin. So like I said, it's good to have some points. Avianca is Colombia's main airline. It's their airline hub. Um, I, I took La Avianca to Colombia before, but only in a connecting flight. So it, it's a really good airline. Avianca is one of my favorite airlines in the world. It's, it's really good. I, I heard back in the days it wasn't, but now it's really good. One of my favorite. Makes uh, you definitely better than United, at, at the very least. Um, budgeting and exchanging money. So um, I, I withdraw my money from ATMs. So when, when you go to Colombia, make sure that you before you go to Colombia, make sure that you have some money with you already, because only can, so it, when you go to immigration, a lot, most countries is visa free, and then there's a lineup for Canadians, just Canadians, and Canadians have to pay a res, reciprocity fee, and it's 190,000 Colombian peso or ninety-five dollar Canadian. It's like steep. It's very steep. Mm -hmm. um, and if you cross from a the border, they don't take U.S. dollars. They only take Colombian peso. And if you exchange in the border, you're gonna get, you're gonna get a very bad exchange rate. I, I didn't know that because I, I, I had U.S. dollars ready with me, so I had to change my money in the border. And like I said, they, they have a money exchange there, but the, the, the currency exchange is not very favorable. So before you go to Colombia, make sure that you already have, you know, at least two hundred thousand Colombian peso handy with you, okay, mm -hmm. just to, so that you're ready. Um, I don't know how it is for the airport. This is from a land border because I crossed from Ecuador. But just have it with you handy just in case. Um, Airbnb is a really good option in Colombia. I took some Airbnbs there and they were, they were quite good. Um, hostels are about 10 to $20 Canadian each. Um, you want to budget about $27 Canadian per day. So I, I was in Colombia for 38 days when I traveled there and this is how much I spent. So $1,265.62. Um, funny, funny enough, my let me just show you because I think it's better if I show you guys. But um, where is my thing? So if you look at my passport, so my passport, yeah, <laughs> my passport is issued in Bogota. So I ran out of passport stamps when I was traveling, and my my Canadian passport was issued in Colombia. So that's why it says uh, Bogota there. <laughs> so the reason why I traveled in Colombia for so long was I was getting my passport renewed, and uh, I needed a. a uh, up to 30 days within the country, so, and I, I'm glad I made a decision. How long did it take at the end? 20, 22 days oh, okay. to, to, to get my passport renewed in Colombia. Yeah, I, at the embassy? Or? Yeah, I went to the Canadian embassy in Colombia, yeah. It took 22 days to process your passport renewal. Yeah. That's like, they, they, I have a, I, they gave me a brand new passport, like yeah. a completely brand new passport. But how do you leave the country if you don't, because you, you, you can't. You cannot. That's you cannot. You cannot leave the country. Yeah, but also your new passport won't have your entry stamp on it. No, they don't care. It's Colombia. <laughs> yeah, I was in Ukraine and they stamp on the side that says do not stamp. So, you know, a lot of countries don't, don't follow rules. Um, you can get a cell phone plan in Colombia. I think it's 20, about $22 Canadian for a one month uh, mobile phone plan. Uh, recommend it. I use it a lot. Um, and uh, 
Yeah. Oh, I, I also did Workaway. So if you've never heard of Workaway before, there's a website called workaway.info and you can use that to get volunteer gigs in Colombia. So you can do volunteer work. Mm. When I was in Colombia, I did volunteer work. Um, I work in a hostel and my job was to translate from English to Spanish and I don't speak any Spanish, so that, that was quite so interesting. You it. <laughs> no, I did it. So the reason, uh, I'll tell you why they, they, they got me the gig. So this hostel in Colombia was the only the only place in Colombia that had a Thai restaurant. And oh. when you have an Asian person working there, it legitimizes your Thai restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it was positive racism and well, I'll take it. Um, the hostel I volunteered in was one, was actually owned by Americans. So, so it was- So you're the token Asian guy. I was the token Asian in, 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 their, in their Thai restaurant. Their Thai yeah, restaurant. and I did a bunch of stuff too. Like it was really, it was really fun. Like I, like my, my job there varied from washing dishes to cutting vegetables and it was so nice to work in a kitchen because all the Colombians in the kitchen were teaching me Spanish. So it was, I got a real Spanish language lesson in person, you know, just, just, just working in the kitchen. And you can't learn a language better than talking to locals. Uh, luckily for me, the kitchen staff, some of them knew English, so they were able to translate from English to, Colomb to Spanish with me. And I, I learned quite a bit, like when I left that hostel, I could converse in Spanish. I, I can't anymore, it, it, it disappeared. But I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll come back when I, when I go back. So you changed your uh, SIM card in your phone? I did, yes. Yeah. So I unlocked my phone before I went, before I traveled. Yeah. There's lots of places there. That easy, you can... easy. Airport. We got small stalls. They'll do it for you too. They'll take your cell phone, put it in for you, do the and program. And that $22 that included a data plan? Yeah, that includes data. data. Phone and call, calling, yeah. Your budget's uh, beyond the accommodation, right? So like, that's after you sort of This includes everything. Everything. Okay. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> including accommodation. Okay. Food. Transportation. But you flew on points, you said, too. Often. Why cross the border from Ecuador? Mm -hmm. yeah. You said internally you... you, you, you I, I did it once, just on, mm -hmm. on LATAM. But if you don't take LATAM, you take um, Viva Colombia. It's not expensive. It's about 100 to $20. So it's not, you're not going to break the bank. Do you remember what you spent the 62 cents on? <laughs> <laughs> My memory's not. <laughs> so, so when you work in the hostel, they provide you free Oh yeah. So I when I did my oh, volunteer sorry. gig, I they, they gave us one meal a day. So the dinner, it was uh, Thai food, and uh, <laughs> and uh, they also gave us uh, free accommodation. So they give you, the you either get a free room in the dorm. The dorm has four beds. You dorm with fellow volunteers. Um, actually, one of my fellow volunteer what, lives in North Van. So we're, I, was, I was like, oh, what the heck, you're from Canada? Oh, what the heck, you're from North Bend? I actually met her here. She came to my one of my meetups. So it was, it was, it was fun to, to meet a, a fellow traveler back, back home. Um, and um, if you want to pay extra, they can give you a private room. So you have a private room. It's heavily discounted. And so you can volunteer and get a private room. So Did you try nice. coach surfing down there? I tried. I didn't get any gigs. Oh, yeah? It seems like women had easier time getting gigs, <laughs> for obvious reasons, for obvious reasons. Uh, um, route planning, so what can you do and what can you see? Um, I'm gonna talk about my route here, but at the end I'll also talk about places that I missed that I will visit again when I go back one day. And then I'll make my recommendation and what I thought was a must see, okay? So this is the route that I took when I was in Colombia. I started actually in Quito, so actually I didn't have it in the map because uh, Google Google Maps only allows you eight points, so I only had eight points here. But I started all the way in Quito, took the bus all the way to Tulcan. Tulcan, I took a taxi to, to, to the border of um, Ecuador and Colombia. Um, I was surprised that they did not try to scam me at Tulcan for taxis. So I gave them a nice tip for not scamming me, <laughs> which is good for them. Um, Ipialis is going to be your first stop. Ipialis is a really nice church. I will show you what that looks like. Um, after EPLS, I went to Pasto. So like, this area here is a little bit more rough in terms of scams. No one's going to try to harm you because I was, I, was, I was able to walk around safely, like everywhere. But it, people looked at me and they tried to scam me. Like I went to this one restaurant and they said, I'm like, how much for this food? And they're like, it costs this much. I'm like, how come it doesn't say that much here? And they're like, oh yeah, that's the price. And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> God, like, damn it. <laughs> but... Um, but once I, once I got out of this place, from here and all the rest here, people were nice. No one tried to scam me at all. Um, Pasto is my first experience going in a huge bus terminal. And then 
the, the locals were actually helping me find a bus. They're like, you don't want this bus, this bus is terrible to go to, go to this bus. I'm like, oh, okay. You know? Um, and then Bogota is obviously the capital city. And then afterwards, I went to Villa de Leyva, Barichara, Bucaramanga, Medellin, Guatape, back to Bogota to get my passport, and then I flew out to Argentina. So um, this is my travel route. I'm not going to go into detail because it's obviously it's just a wall of text here. But uh, I'll go step by step starting right now. So Ipialis, this place right here, Las Lajas is the must-see thing there. It's, it's a church. Okay. Um, it looks like this. It uh, looks like this. It's a, it's, it's a church in the river. It was built on a river. It's incredible. It's, I went during um, a festival, actually. That's why there's so many people here. So, but typically, there's not this many people there. Um, there is, when I was in Colombia, I did not see any Asian people until I went here. So there's a lot of tourists here from all over the world. Um, and uh, you'll see people taking selfies, just like, <laughs> like with the church in the background. Um, <clears throat> Be careful of restaurant scams. Now, if you take the taxi, so if you're gonna go to Las Lajas from Ipiales, it costs 2,000 Colombian peso each way. Okay, don't pay more than that. Otherwise, if they, they try to charge me 5,000, I mean, it's not a whole lot more, right? It's like $1.50 more, but, but you know, it's a principle. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> so it's 2,000 per way or 4,000 round trip with a collective taxi. Um, this, is the, this is the city, what, um, Ipiales looks like. It's a really nice city. You can walk around. I, I was walking around here. This is like a nice church. There's like a big supermarket here. I ate in one of the restaurants in the corner on this side. Like I said, it's a very, it's a very nice place to walk around. It's very peaceful. Um, lots of like families just hanging out in the middle here. Uh, this is the kind of food you can expect there. Uh, typical like Colombian food. They always have like a plantain, like fried plantains and eggs and a piece of meat and some rice and some vegetable. What, is that, is that, that's beef? This is, it looks like beef, yeah. Yep. Looks like beef. Yes, BPS. It's not liver, is it? No, it's not liver. I'm okay with liver, but it's not liver. And then they gave me some salsa, I think, to go with my food. Another f Colombian food that I ate there, so another plantain. Yeah. And they have a chicken and like a mishmash of stuff here. <laughs> so the weird thing with Colombia that you'll notice is they like to eat like multiple types of carbs together, which absolutely makes no sense to me. Like your, your plate will have like a piece of like, it'll have rice. And then it'll have like spaghetti, and it'll have like French fries, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> why do you have those three? Like, why usually not? you just have one. No, you have just you just have one of those three. You don't have all three of them in your plate, and they always do that, right? And then on top of that, you have like a fried banana, <laughs> you know, and and uh, <laughs> and, and this this looks like mashed potatoes to me. So I mean, that looks like lentils. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like why do they have all these like carbs in one plate? Jeez, yeah. And then, all these carbs, and you get like one piece of protein. So it's like, like this tiny protein, right? So you'll definitely gain a lot of weight if you don't move around in Colombia because it's so carb heavy, like the food. This is what the, 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 taxi, the taxi station looks like where you're gonna take the taxi to Las Lajas. Um, so it, this, it looks like this, okay? You can, if you want the numbers here too. <laughs> um, and then when I got out of uh, Ipiales here, I went to Pasto next, so this is Pasto right here. This this uh, this station here is Pasto. All right, so there's tons of different like uh, bus companies, and some are better than the other. The, the nicest one is the one in the very end, like this this two in the corner here, right? They usually go by price. That's kind of like how you can just figure out and quality. So there's actually more. So this is just one side. The other side is like like right here. There's like cheaper buses, but they're very uncomfortable. So I, I would not recommend it if you're traveling. There, I would. I mean, maybe Stephanie C won't give a shit, but <laughs> uh, but like, like here's some more comfortable ones. <laughs> um, so when I was in Bogota, I didn't really do anything there because I, I the, the whole purpose of me going to Bogota was to get my passport. I, I got a haircut from a Colombian. Um, but if you want to go to Bogota, the places that you can check out there is the Gold Museum. Uh, like I, said, I didn't go to any of these places. Um, this mountain here, and they have a sanctuary on top of the mountain. National Museum of Colombia, Plaza Bolivar, Simon Bolivar Park and the Cathedral of Bogota. So this is like the must-sees in, in Bogota. And uh, this is the bus station in Bogota. So like if you want to leave Bogota and go somewhere else, this is what the bus station looks like. So my next destination is called Villa de Leyva. Um, it's, I was so shocked how cheap it was. It was 10,000 Colombian peso for my accommodation. And I had a private room, a private washroom, 
and a breakfast. And look at my breakfast. It, like I already ate some food when I took a picture, but like, you know, I have like some some rice and eggs and some tomatoes here, some bread. Okay. So how far is this place from Bogota? Um, I took the bus there. I don't remember how long, how far it was, but maybe four hours away, something like that. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. But definitely, you definitely go here. Um, this is what you can see here. So lots of cobbled stones and really old like architecture from colonial times. Like I said, it's really nice. Uh, you don't need, unless you're planning to see the other places, I think you probably just need two days max here. Two days max. Okay, so like I said, really nice colonial towns, just like walking around, taking a picture of them. And some of them are restaurants too, so I ate in some of the restaurants. You know, same thing, you know, lots of fries and rice and, and bread. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like the big open area. Like I said, super nice. Like there's like a scenery of the mountain here. Yeah, you just walk around there and this is what Villa de Leva is. A lot of uh, Colombians go here for vacation, so if it's a Colombian holiday, they go here. Um, they do take credit card in Colombia, but you'll notice something really weird in Colombia. So when you use your credit card in Colombia, they'll ask you a, like a weird question, like how many repetitions do you want? You're like, what? What do you mean by that? So basically, every time a Colombian uses a credit card in Colombia, they have a choice of paying it in full or in like down payments. <laughs> it's so weird, right? Like you can buy, like let's say you buy like, um, let's say you, you go to McDonald's there, I don't know if they have McDonald's there actually. I think they do. So let's say you buy a big, uh, a Big Mac combo. You can choose to pay it in four installments. <laughs> so like you know, like one dollar today, one dollar next month, one dollar the following month, the dollar. And and so that's what it means when they ask you like how many. So you say no, just just one. Like I'm paying it in full. All right. They do take credit card there, but tell them you want to pay it in full because that 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 question is gonna pop up a lot of times. You're like, what the heck does this mean? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want down payment in your McDonald's combo. What do they ask, <laughs> what do they ask in Spanish? What is it, quanto repetición? I don't know, but you'll see, it's obvious. They'll just ask you how many numbers. You're like, uh, uno. It's, it's like uno. Yeah, uno. <laughs> uno is uno. Yeah. yeah. Um, later on, I took another, this is another bus stop it's, it's that I went zero, to. Yeah, one single, yeah. Um, this is what the sh shared bus kind of looks like. Kind of like what to expect in a shared bus. So it's, it's quite cramped. People are puke. Sometimes people puke. So uh, <laughs> one thing that you keep in mind though, when you go to, uh, oh, forgot the Rakesh is very visual. Um, so Colombia, <laughs> Colombia's roads are extremely windy. Aww. Like they're winding nonstop. The views are nice, but after a while, you don't want to look at the view anymore because you're getting dizzy. Yeah. Um, because of the windy road, people feel pukey. Like I felt so nauseous so many times. <laughs> oh, you mean like I feel like I'm gonna hurl too, but so the, you, get, the, you, you get motion sickness. But, well, it's it's so bad. It's like really like it's really steep like oh, turns. Nice. Now, when you're in Colombia, you can reduce this greatly by having hard candy. So hard candy mm -hmm. prevents that motion sickness feeling. So when I went there later on, I learned my lesson. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna go another bus ride without a hard candy. So make sure you have a lollipop or some kind of like hard candy. It just like I, I, like it's not good for you to have all, all the sugar, but better than puking, right? So um, just take eat them as you're driving like not not all places are gonna be like that so when it's a straight line you can stop eating your candy but then when it starts going like this then you can start taking it again um this is like a more beat up looking uh, <laughs> a bus stop like as the deeper you get into colombia the more like uh authentic or raw it starts to look um they're very safe as, uh, even though it looks kind of sketchier they're quite safe people actually were helping me and people were quite nice um so then my next destination is barichara so it looks like another colonial place. This is the accommodation I stayed at. Um, this place is called, uh, shoot, I don't even remember the place, name of the place. I have it somewhere, so I'll, I'll let you know once I remember it. But the biggest thing to do in Barichara is to do the Camino, Camino Real. Oh yeah, the Royal Road. Yeah. Huh. So this, the, the host, this, this hostel's name is uh, Hostel Casa Nakuma. The owner can speak perfect English, and so can the wife. Did you have a book of uh, hostel accommodations? I didn't, no, I just winged it. No, I don't. I so you don't. just what, you ask it, a taxi yeah. driver or something with a hostel? No, room? no, I went to Booking.com. Booking oh, out. Booking.com. Yeah, or Hostel World. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, the, the, the owner of this hostel has perfect English. Uh, he used to live in Bogota and he got sick of the city life, so he, him and his wife decided to settle in the, in the countryside. And uh, they're actually turning this hostel to a Spanish school, too. So soon it'll be a Spanish school slash hostel. Um, the bad thing about the hostels, they don't have hot, hot water. So when you take a shower, it's cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. If you can handle that, that's fine. Mm. Um, 
so Camino Real looks, so this is the, the city Barrichara. Like I said, this is cobbled stone. You can walk through. It's super beautiful, very picturesque. I couldn't find a place where I can go and see like the panorama of, of the town, but uh, it's somewhere here. They gave me some direction, I got lost, so I just went and ended up going back to my accommodation. But if you can see what this town looks like, it's so beautiful. It's very picturesque. This is what the Camino Real looks like. So it's like a long hike. And um, at the bottom of the hike, you'll see this old church here. You can also get ice cream. That's what I did. So after hiking, you're parched, so you eat some ice cream. I'll, I'll show you some videos um, from the Camino, from, from the Camino Real. So let me see if I can Did you use uh, Booking.com to actually make a reservation or did just to get the addresses of the hostels? No, no, you make the booking there, but you don't pay Booking.com, you pay the accommodation. Oh, you don't have to pay Booking.com? You don't, it's really weird. I don't know how that works, oh. but. Uh, how do they get the commission? I, they don't. They oh. do. They take they do, it off yeah. of your reservation when you yeah. complete the reservation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is like what a city looks like. So I'm just like kind of like walking around. You can kind of see what the, the town looks like. And then this is what the Camino kind of real looks like. How long is the Camino? Um, <clears throat> it's it's quite long. Maybe like an hour or two to hike it, or maybe a little bit longer. But it's 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 it's, it's easy because you're going downhill, right? Well, it's downhill. Oh, yeah, it's going downhill. Yeah, and and then you walk back. Or? You know, you don't walk back up. No one walks back up. So <laughs> you get to the bottom, and they have uh, bu uh, buses that takes you back to the city. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, because a lot of tourists go there, right? So. Um, they were kind of giving me weird looks when I went to the bottom of the town because I don't think they've ever seen an Asian before. But like I said, like no Jackie Chan. No Jackie Chan. <laughs> no, I was just an alien. In in this town, I was an alien. Like at the bottom of the town, not not in Barichara. Yeah. yeah. But um, so this is kind of like the the big park in the bottom of the town. So once you get to the very bottom, this is kind of like what you can see. Uh, a lot of families come here. They play like soccer or basketball. They have a basketball court there too. So. It's, it's just nice. Um, my next, my next destination after Barichara was Chikamocha Canyon. It's the second deepest canyon in the world after the Grand Canyon, so it's really nice. Um, a lot of people go here for paragliding, and I saw a lot of Americans here, which is really weird. Like I went here, I was like, oh English, oh my god, I haven't heard English for so long. <laughs> so I had tons of Americans there paragliding and puking while paragliding, because <laughs> it's because it's spinning, right? So they're getting dizzy. Um, if you want to go here, they don't really have like a bus that goes here. So Colombia is really weird. When you take buses, buses will often stop when they see someone on the side of the road and they'll just pick them up and then they come in. So if you want to go here, you have to tell the bus to drop you off here. And then after the bus drops you off here, if you want to take the next bus, you have to stand in the middle of the road and, uh, and uh, pretty much hail the next bus. So I did that. So I was... Uh, let me see if I. So I was with the, the so the owner of the hostel. So the, the good thing about staying in that hostel, so you can see some Americans here. Uh, so the good thing about staying in the hostel was that like, uh, so so th this this guy is the owner of the hostel that I, that I stayed at, and he uh, he actually just drove me there. <laughs> so it's so nice, such a nice guy. So because him and his wife were planning on paragliding that day, so I got lucky. They're like, hey, why don't you just come with us and we'll drop when you can go hang out with us for the day, and then when when we're done, you can hail the next bus. So they, they took me there and then they dropped me off and then once we were done exploring Chikamocha Canyon, they just dropped me in the middle of the road. So this is where they dropped me off. It's like a it's like an amusement park for Colombians. So I'm, that's me, I'm just waiting for the, road to, to, for the next bus to come. So I'm just standing, I stand here for like half an hour I think. Yeah. Did you do the paragliding? I didn't, no I didn't. No? No I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't even know there was a paraglider there, but yeah, I didn't. Um, Bukaramanga was the next place I went to. It's it's a city actually close to Venezuela. It's a university city, so lots of students here. Great place to learn Spanish. So they, they have a program here where you can uh, learn Spanish as a, as a, what do you call it? As a foreigner. Extra heneros. Yeah, so you can go there and, so if I ever go back to Colombia, which I plan on going, and if I want to learn Spanish, I will probably take a Spanish course here in, in the city. Um, the weather here is quite nice, it's very, it's it's warm. It's definitely warm, but not so hot that you feel like you're gonna, you're gonna die. So it's it's nice. It's a pleasant place. Not as nice as Medellin though. Medellin has the perfect weather. It's, it's Medellin's the city of eternal spring, right? So it, it, they have nice weather the whole year. Um, this place is a hidden gem in my opinion. I think it's a great place to live. So, like when I went there, I was like, oh wow, I wish I stayed here longer because it was super nice. <clears throat> 
Uh, Medellin. So the Medellin is the big place that oh, every single tourist. So if, if you want to see tourists, you go to Medellin. Everyone is here, like every single tourist from all over the world, you know, like Americans, Asians, Japanese people, you know, Europeans, they're all in Medellin. Everyone's in Medellin. People only go to Medellin, which is sad because they miss the rest of uh, Colombia. Um, you can do a public Escobar tour here because this, this is where his um, Medellin cartel operated from. Um, you can see a giant castle that is French inspired. You can learn salsa here. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a they have a place called Juan Valdez Cafe. This is the star their equivalent of Starbucks. <laughs> this is the Colombian Starbucks. Colombian Starbucks. Yeah, you can again paragliding. They have obsession with paragliding in Colombia. Um, you can live the digital nomad life here. So if you wanna like kind of visit people who's kind of working from their laptop, a lot of people make home base in Medellin because just like like I said, it's not too expensive and food is ch cheap and. Pretty, pretty nice weather all year round. Uh, there's a place called El Poblado. This is where people party. So if you want to party, you can go here. Lots of tons of Americans here. Tons. I was actually upset that some of the Americans that I saw there, like most of them were nice, but there was a few bad apples who were very condescending to the local Colombians, which did not sit well with me. Like they would go up to Colombians and say something like, you know, do you understand English? Do you understand English? You know, it's like so condescending. I was like, oh my God, how are, why are they accepting this abuse from this guy? You know, I was like, oh, it's horrible. Um, now, Laureles is the opposite of Poblado because Poblado is, it's like the luxury, nicer side of town. Laureles is the more quiet side, but it's also safe. So the three safest places in Medellin is El Poblado, Laureles, and Envigado. So if you want to stay safe in Medellin, don't leave these three places. Okay, you leave these three places, they're still bad people. All right, these three places are safe. Stay here, these three. They're, they're pretty big too. They have everything that you need here too. They have really good fried chicken and El Poblado actually. Yeah. I have to take that picture. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, Doesn't Poblado mean poor? The, 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 I don't know what it means, but. Yeah, yeah this, this, Poblanos, yeah. Yeah. It means poor in Spanish. I think you're thinking about Pobledo or something. But anyways. Yeah, the poor people, the El so, but the rich people live here. The rich people live here. I mean, that's why they call it the poor district. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a big contrast between El Poblado and Loreles because El Poblado is more high energy, more high energy party party kind of place, while Loreles is more relaxed. Which one is the nicest out of all three? El Poblado. Okay. But if I were to live there, I would live in Loreles because I, I, I spent equal time between these two, and I actually like Loreles more. I felt it was more authentic. You know, like I. There's a lot of backpackers in Laurelis too, so if you go to Laurelis, it's not like you're not going to backpacker-friendly places. There's a lot of backpackers there still, so like I hang out with people in my hostel. We go go eat food and stuff, so so it's quite nice. Um, I actually don't party, but the only time I think I I, I kind of party was here, cause like everyone in my hostel was like drinking, and and they they were buying me like alcohol, so I'm like, oh okay, I guess so, you know. But I like I typically I don't I don't really I don't drink. Um, so after Medellin, there's a place near Medellin. It's about an hour and a half bus ride from there. It's called Guatape. And um, in my opinion, this is one of the biggest highlights of Colombia. So I spent two weeks here and I stayed in a place called Lakeview Hostel. If this is a bus stay. You must stay in this hostel. Okay. It's, 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 they have such a nice view of the lake. It's operated by Americans, so they speak English there. They have the Thai restaurant on the roof, like I said. Really good breakfast. Um, they... You can also do volunteer work there. Um, everyone who volunteers here doesn't want to leave. Like, people just want to stay. Uh, they, if you speak English, they're more likely to accept you as a volunteer because they actually want someone to work with either in the restaurant or in the reception. So I was working in the reception a lot, but also in the restaurant. If you know bartending, you're, mm -hmm. you're hard guaranteed 100%. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people drink here, right? So you, yeah, I met a lot of Canadians here too. It was weird. It was weird. Um, Lakeview also they also have like scooter rentals and a lot of people go to San Rafael which is a nearby town and they ride their scooter there and uh, there's a lot of places to go hiking also but the, the biggest must-see place here is called La Piedra del Pinol and that means the rock so it's like a giant rock uh, uh, just a question again going back from yeah. Medellin um, what would a apartment cost for a month I don't know. De depends. If you know locals, it, it could be as little as four hundred dollars a month. But you need to have a local hookup. If you don't have a local hookup, then it's probably six hundred to a thousand dollars a month. And the area you said would be that uh, <coughs> El Poblado. El Poblado, yeah. If yeah. you want the luxury in, in the luxury district, yeah. 
Yeah, because there's like I said, there's tons of American expats who live there, like tons of them. So the weather, weather-wise, that's the best city in Colombia, right? Yeah, it's the city of Eternal Spring. It's permanent. Is it humid? No, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. I literally even during the summer. It's perfect the whole year. <laughs> it's perfect, perfect, <laughs> permanently 22 degrees the whole year. But you didn't get to any coastal cities, eh? I did not go to coastal cities. No, I, I did not go to the coast. Yeah. There, because I stayed longer in Guadalupe. I stayed here for two weeks. I, I do not regret it. So between Ecuador and Colombia, for language, which one would be better? Colombia. Yeah. yeah. Ecuador is easier for money because they use US dollars there, right? So Ecuador doesn't have their own currency. Just like Panama, they use US dollars. So. But. Um, well, Panama has their own money, though. Bolero, what is it? Bolero or something, but it's pegged two to one. The U.S. dollar? Yeah. From what I know, they use U.S. dollars heavily there too. Yeah, but it's pegged. But it, yeah, the currency is pegged. Right? Yeah. Um, if you go to Guadalupe, you can also check out Pablo Escobar's mansion. So the Cali cartel bombed it with the help of Los Pepes. You can go check it out there. Uh, people play paintball there too. So, so if you like paintball, you can like you can pretend you're like a cartel fighting the police, <laughs> shooting each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots of backpackers go there. It's like it's one of the, the touristy thing to do in, in, in this place. So yeah. <laughs> you have a picture of the pizza. I do. Yeah, it's coming up. So uh, these are some of the friends I made in the hostel. Yeah. So like, I'll tell you. Yeah, this guy's this giant guy. So, he's American. He's from Texas. Uh, first time he's ever left his country at the age of fifty five. He was telling me he's like, oh, he's got my passport and he was so nice. He invited me to Texas actually. He's like, come to Texas. I'll show you. In his Texan accent, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> But uh, he's like, I'll show you the, the, the rodeo and stuff. Uh, this guy permanently moved to Colombia after moving there. Yeah. Yeah. How do you permanently move to Colombia? You still got to get immigration. Immigrate. I think it's pretty easy for Americans. He, yeah. he moved there permanently. Huh. Yeah, he, I think he goes here because he said he can't find a, a date in the US. <laughs> but in Colombia, it's easy for him to find a date. So <laughs> he said age doesn't matter there. So. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Age. What's that? I don't think it's age that they're looking at. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm yeah, you're probably right, but, um, yeah, they, they were so endearing. There was another, they had another guy with them who told me he was shocked to f find out what traveling is like because it's he's 55, got his passport for the first time, and he said, "I'm so surprised. One minute I'm talking to a German, the next minute I'm talking to a Canadian. You know, like is this what traveling is? I can't believe it. People just take their backpack and they go. You know, and then I'm like." I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's right. You know, it's really endearing, you know, because uh, most Americans don't travel, right? As, as you know, uh, so it's some some people work in the kitchen. They, they this this these two were teaching me Spanish. So like I said, really nice experience. And this is the rock, La, oh. La Piedra. Oh yeah, wow, yeah. quite a stairway. So yeah. You, yeah, you climb the rock to the top, and they have a, a very oh, nice. Wow, did they play the Led Zeppelin on the way? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah it's yeah. Really, really nice. That's quite famous, so is yeah. This, is this a mountainous area or what? It's, no, it's a lot of lakes. A lot, of, a lot lakes. of lakes. It looks like this. Oh, nice. Awesome. Oh, this is the top. This is the top. It's so beautiful. That's why I stayed here for so long. Wow. Like, I, like, I wanted to go to those coastal t places, but I got stuck here because I loved my, I had such a good time here that I was like, ah, you know what? I'm good. Like, Where I'm, is this? Guatape. Is what? this a man-made uh, lake? It's, it's man-made man by accident. Yeah. By accident. I think they made, they made a dam, I think, and okay. it flooded the whole area. Mm. Oh. Yeah, that's why it looks like this. So, so it's so on altitude? Sorry. So, so it's the picture from the top of that rock? Yeah, this is the picture <laughs> of the top of the rock, yeah. What would be the altitude of this place? It's like... It's, not, it's not that high. What are they it's, charging? It's about, it's about Medellin. Okay. What are they charging to walk up the rock? Um, it wasn't cheap. Oh. It's definitely oh. tourist, no, tourist price. It's not cheap. No, because this is, this is the, the, the touristy thing to see in Colombia. Like this is like their Eiffel Tower, you know. Like, <laughs> like you pay a ticket, you, it's like you, you must do it when you're there. Yeah, except it's a rock. I don't know how they got the rock up there, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, more Colombian food. This is what I ate in the, the hostel. Like I said, this is the breakfast that they, they serve. What it's is so it? good. Sausages. Yeah, sausage, nine some nine rice, nine. some fruits. Is that rice or is that omelet? Beans. I think it's rice and beans, rice and then and beans. Some orange juice. I don't know what this is. Tea. Soup. Soup, I think. Soup. Yeah, this is my breakfast. It's so nice. It's, it's, it was really cheap, too. <laughs> That's me doing uh, just blogging. <laughs> and then this is kind of like the lunch. I ate this like every day like, <laughs> when I was here for like two weeks. So what is you know? that you get? Uh, it was really cheap. It was, like it was like five bucks for this or even cheaper than five dollars, maybe four dollars. So you get like a 
you what know, this what is like corn. It's called arepa. Mm. I hate it. It tastes, it tastes like cardboard. <laughs> this thing, I hate this thing. I, I just eat it because it's included in my meal. But like, you know, it has eggs and like some potatoes. That's why. That's why I keep telling you they have rice, potatoes, and corn. Like it doesn't make sense. Beans, yeah. Yeah, and they have some beans and some avocados and some some beef. You can choose pork also, so you, you can choose the meat. I'm gonna give you a uh, juice to go with it. Yeah. No and, chicken. Flat, and bread. There's bread here too, I think. No chicken. There's chicken. No, they have everything. They have chicken, pork, beef. So, where do they need that? Fish. They have fish that too. The fish is good. Huh? Because they do little meat. That's why. It's no, no. The, the meat is big. Meat? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's covered. It's underneath. It's, oh. it's big. Oh, it's big? No, no, no. In, in Colombia, when they give you food, they give you a lot. Like they give you a lot. It's it's you can eat it the whole day. Like like for you, I think you can eat for three meals even. <laughs> yeah. Did you see so this. Yeah, I was gonna say. Was like, I can just imagine most of the Colombians are pretty chubby. Right? They're not actually. No, they're, re they're really fit actually. So you see the. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they're they're really fit. They're really fit. Yeah. Uh. So this is the, just a town. So this is the place that I didn't go, but you should. So when, <laughs> when, I, when I go back, I will definitely go back here. So Cali, home of the Cali Cartel, they're not there anymore, but it's still a nice historic place to check out. Um, also home of the plastic surgery in, in, in Colombia. So a lot of women here has enhancements. <laughs> I don't know, that's, all, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, Cartagena, this is the, the, the most touristy cruise ship port in, yeah, the, in the world. City, yeah. So a lot of cruise ship stops here, and then like, all the seniors come out and they get, they get scammed by locals. <laughs> Um, Santa Marta, very picturesque looking beach like town, so definitely more, more uh, what do you call it, local experience than Cartagena. Because Cartagena has a very touristy feel to it. Um, apparently, you should still go, it's apparently really beautiful. I'm gonna definitely check it out, but I probably won't stay long. It's just like a, a bucket list thing, like you go there and you get out. You, did you go to Cartagena? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, I actually liked it. You liked it? Yeah. You can take boats from Panama to Cartagena. Um, Pereira, um, there's a place near Pereira called Zona Cafeteria, so yeah, it's coffee, coffee? Yeah, the coffee plantation, really popular, so you should go to Pereira and then go to the coffee plantation, Zona Cafeteria is the name of it. Uh, Cocora Valley, this is the place where they have the giant palm trees, like super high palm trees, one of the most popular famous hikes in Colombia, so if you like to go hiking, uh, apparently it's not too difficult, did you do this one? So you can go hike to the to just giant palm trees. Um, Tatacoa Desert, it looks incredible, like, it's, it's the desert in Colombia and they have a really nice scenic um, landscape. And then Leticia, so I originally wanted to go to Leticia because if you go to Leticia, Leticia is the Amazon rainforest in Colombia. And Leticia is bordering a town called Tabatinga in Brazil. So now Leticia, Tabatinga, and there's another town here. This is a triple border between Peru, Brazil, and Colombia. It's a triple border in this area. Uh, now, if you go here, you can take a boat in Tabatinga and take the, take the boat and it'll go to the Amazon rainforest and to the Amazon rainforest in the big Amazon river. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a seven day trip and it takes you to Manaus, Manaus in Brazil. And they, apparently the sunset is like amazing. It's like a burning sun, you know, in the, in, in the jungle. Um, I did not go here because when I was there at the time, turns out they couldn't issue me a, a visa to Brazil. V Brazil is more lenient now with the visas. Yeah, it's changed. As of June 1st, no visa. Yeah, it's visa free now. So the new president really? who's... Yeah, as of yeah, June 1st. Yeah. 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 The new president who's very sketchy, this is one of the good things he did. So he... he I still have a five year thing. It's to give five years. Yeah. I, I had to go to Argentina and get a 20, like a, a 30 day visa. but. So I, I had no choice. If I wanted to go to Brazil, I had to go to Argentina at the time. But but if you go here, I recommend you go to Leticia to end your trip, and then take the, the the boat into the Amazon River to Manaus. Apparently, that's what is a must a must do. Yeah, you can also do um ayahuasca if you if you want. I, I don't know if you guys know what that is, but uh, ayahuasca is like a a psychedelic. Um, but it's I I learned about it when I was taking psychology when I was in Langara College. Apparently, it's uh, scientifically proven to be one of the psychedelics in the world that can remove 90% of your negative emotions. <laughs> and it's scientifically proven. And I was like, oh my god, that's incredible. But apparently, if you take it, it's going to be the worst week of your life. <laughs> you are just vomiting, 
and diarrhea and sweating nonstop and it's like that for like the whole week. That sounds like a big negative. Yeah. yeah it is. <laughs> but afterwards you're, you're apparently you're good. Because I, I, I had a lot of people that told me they did it and they said it was incredible. Like af afterwards. But during it, it's the worst experience of your life. Every single thing that's, that you've thought about in your head that you're trying to suppress, it's all going to come out. <laughs> Everything that you've, you've experienced your whole life that was negative that you've kind of tried to suppress and, and like hide in your subconscious, it's all going to come out and it's going to get you. Like, every, like every, over and over and over and over and over again, I guess until you get sick of it and you just get numb. And maybe that's why you feel better afterwards. <laughs> um, so you can do it in Leticia if you want to do that stuff. Uh, I I want to do it one day, but I'm not anytime soon right now. But yeah. Uh, safety tips. Uh, don't be flashy. So um, I'm just gonna reset this. So um, when you go to Colombia, don't be flashy because um, there's a lot of thieves there. Do you, know, do you guys know Nomadic Matt, the blogger? No, do you know Nomadic Matt? Oh. Nomadic Matt got stabbed in Colombia. Hmm? Recently? Yeah, recently. Oh, wow. In Bogota. And the reason why he got stabbed was because he resisted a robbery. So someone tried to take his cell phone and he tried to fight back. And it was a, it was a 17 year old boy and stabbed him. Yeah, he, he went to the hospital after. But he was okay, obviously, because he wrote his article yeah. about it. Um, it happened in the capital city of Bogota, where he got stabbed. It, it, it was his fault, though, because he was being flashy. He was walking the street with his cell phone out, right? Don't do that. You don't walk the street with your cell phone out. Don't ha do not be flashy at all, unless there's a lot of tourists and they're taking pictures. Yeah, just, just avoid. Small towns are really safe. So when he got stabbed, he was in a big city. So avoid. Small towns are really safe. It's the big towns you have, you have to be more careful of. Even the locals will tell you, just don't be flashy. Don't have your cell phone out. If you have money, only put the bills in your pocket that you're gonna, you're gonna use for that day. The rest of the money that you have, keep it in your accommodation. Uh, lock up your belongings to avoid temptations from opportunists. And uh, don't give in to scams. Just when someone tries to scam you, just fight back. But if it's a robbery, don't fight back. Just give them everything. Yeah, because you don't want to die, right? They're not gonna hesitate to to stab you or, or shoot you. That's like South Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I heard Venezuela is worse because even after you give yourself, they'll still shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, <laughs> you want to learn basic Spanish because uh, if you know some Spanish, they respect you more. And just, just it's kind of like, like I went to France for example, and you know French people are, are notorious for being snobs for kind of like with with, with the language. Like if you ask them, can you speak English? They they, no one can speak English. Are they mobile? Yeah, mobile? but if you if you try to speak French, then they'll be nice to you. They'll speak English to you. They actually spoke English to me when I was in France. So same thing goes for Colombia or any place in the world that you travel to. Try to say some stuff in the local language, and they'll keep your respect level just you know went up by a hundred percent. And I said, bring hard candy with you at all times so you don't get more, you don't puke in uh, long bus rides. Any questions, everyone? Yes. Um. Is it safe to like rent a motorcycle or a car and like drive and yeah 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 it is it is if if you if you, you you're from India so you can probably you're okay <laughs> yeah 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 India has the worst uh, traffic in the, the world yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think you and I can drive back there now but uh, yeah just but just you used to drive there uh, a little bit yeah 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 you're good you're good no Colombia is not nowhere near no in, in India is the worst place for for traffic I've ever been to in my life. Yeah. So you know, you're going to be 100% okay. This but, is nothing. This is like a joke to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but they do have like car rentals and like motorcycles. A lot, lots of motorcycle rentals. Okay. So lo the locals like motorcycles more. Mm -hmm. That's, that seems to be like, or tourists, I mean. Lots of tourists take the motorcycles. Okay. You've yeah. been to Peru, right? Yeah. Yeah. So between Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia, which is the second star of the three? Because I haven't been to Ecuador and Colombia, so I'm just trying to compare. I think Ecuador's the least safest of the three. Okay. Um, especially. Um, Guayaquil. Uh, Quito has a lot of petty theft also. Peru, I did not feel unsafe in Peru when I went there. Yeah, same. I felt very safe. Yeah. But, like, I don't, I don't want to bring in the race card here, but if you're white, you're not as safe in Peru as other races. Because every time I read something bad happens to someone in Peru, it's always like an American. <laughs> always an American. Like, I got in a taxi, I paid the taxi driver, the taxi driver drove off with my belongings. It's always the same story. But it, it only happens to Americans, it seems to me, or like Europeans, you know? Like I have some European friends, they went to Peru, they, dropped, they, they put their back for a second, it's gone, swipe already. 
right? So it didn't seem to happen to me. So it seems like they target um, white people. Like just you know, like I don't want to bring the race card here, but I'm trying to be really realistic here, and that seems to be the case in Peru. So Colombia is safer than Ecuador. Right? Colombia is safer. If you don't look for trouble in Colombia, you're safe. Don't look for trouble. Don't look for cocaine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and don't bring cocaine back here too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, but like I said, Ecuador is probably the least safest. Yeah. <laughs> In my opinion, what do you think? You went to Ecuador, right? I've actually only been to Colombia and then the bottom half of South America. Oh, so you didn't go to? Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm actually planning a trip that has all the rest of the countries that I missed. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Gotcha. Yeah, you went to the weird ones, not the not the normal ones. Yeah, that's because I did it on a cruise to Antarctica. Yeah, oh, the, the, you went to Guyana, Suriname, French Guyana. Those but are like, I split those up though. Oh, okay. I did that from Trinidad and Tobago because it's cheap. Oh, the flight. The flight. Yeah, I, I did see. the flights because of your my blog article. Your blog article <laughs> going through land borders. Yeah, maybe I'll talk. If I'll do a talk on that if people are interested. Yeah. But uh, any other questions? So about we don't we don't get a visa ahead of time. No, you yeah, have to pay. A, you just pay a reciprocity fee. It's not a visa. It's a it's a fee. Oh. Okay. What yeah, it is is the Canadian government charges Colombians that that that, that, that amount of money mm -hmm. for Colombians to come to Canada. To come so to the Colombians Colombia. flip it around and say, well, if you're, if you're Canadian, you know, right? That's well, why it's called reciprocity. Well, the weird thing is Americans charge them too, and they they don't charge Americans back. <laughs> <laughs> so America, U.S. gets special privileges. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, any other questions, everyone, about uh, Colombia? Safety, budgeting, whatever. Everything's good? All right, well, thank you all for coming today. And uh, our next speaker is Rakesh, this man right here. <laughs>